<laughs> Cut that. Yeah, I'm not getting that. <laughs> that's what like that's what guys do to yeah, each other. But it's like nice. and then the thought pops in your head like why am I even doing this? Like, should I quit? Is this what my face doing when I'm talking? Why would anyone talk to me? How do you deal with rejection? That's, that's a, oh yeah, that's a good question. Oh my god, I remember being so scared. Yeah. So scared. I used to, my first couple of experiences on set, I couldn't eat the whole day. I couldn't eat breakfast. I couldn't eat the night before. Animal work, so you can like relate your character to an animal and like how they would move, how they would talk, how they would behave maybe. So my character was a cat. I mean, yeah, watch it. You tell me if I look like I'm spitting furballs. <laughs> <laughs> there you had one class called Dialogue with the Inner Partner, I think it was called. I've never done anything like it before and I probably never will again. He was at the premiere, they had filmed it, at the premiere, on the red carpet, the director comes up to him and goes, I'm so sorry, but we cut you out. You just feel like you're on the edge of attention of the whole world because everyone is looking at you. You put yourself in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Why? My name is Adrian Rogozin and this is Beyond Real Talk. A podcast where I invite real entertainment industry professionals and ask them real questions. What are they actually doing? How are they doing it? And why are they doing it? And my today's guest, uh, she's an actress <laughs> yes. with German and Swedish background, mm -hmm. Charlene Ilya. Yes. You were born in Germany. Yes. You grew up Correct. in Sweden and you studied in Czech Republic. I did. Yeah, how did this all happen? I was born in Germany. My parents are both from Germany. Um, they grew up in a small town, but I always loved Sweden. I always traveled there. So when I was three, we moved to Sweden. My dad got a job there and I was, my sister and I were thrown into kindergarten in the new country. Mm. And that was it. And yeah, and then I lived there until I was like 18. And then yeah, and you, you, but you don't remember Germany because you were... Fast. Yeah, no, I don't remember living there, but we went back to visit um, mm -hmm. every year. So like I do, I do still feel like I had a childhood there because we had all my family there. We, we were there often, mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, like again, like in your experience, because you lived in Sweden, you lived in Germany. How, why, how different is life in those countries? It's very different at the same time, not that different. In both Germany and Sweden, I grew up in small towns. Mm -hmm. um, but Germany is like a little bit the way that we think Germany is. It's a lot more, it's quite like, especially the school system is a bit, it's more strict. It's more, um, just more German. <laughs> <laughs> Rule driven, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and Sweden... I'm really glad that I grew up in Sweden. I'm really glad that I had my childhood there because, um, again, you know, in a small town, just nature, basically, anytime I wasn't in school, we were just outside in the woods, mm -hmm. running around naked. Yeah. I'm joking, not naked. <laughs> 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 but, um, but it was just a really lovely and really relaxed and stress-free childhood that I had yeah. in Sweden. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Um how did you decide to get into the world of rejection i always again i always loved like um, reading books and i would always get really into the characters and always kind of wish that i was them i remember there was this one moment when <laughs> this is really embarrassing <laughs> yes it's okay i'll tell it anyway um i was <laughs> in the car with my mom and i had just read the golden compass by philip pullman which is, we were talking about earlier the dark his dark materials there's a series of it now um i had read the book i was like maybe 11 and i was crying in the car to my mom and i said mommy i'm so upset <laughs> and she was like what's wrong what's wrong and i told her that i was so upset because i would never be like her like the girl in the book and mm. i wanted to like be like her and i wanted to have an adventure like her mm. So yeah, I always wanted to be like the characters that, uh, and then, you know, I watched behind the scenes of all my favorite movies. I was like, you know what? I can be like them if I just pretend to be like them. Mm -hmm. Let's be an actor. And then I asked my mom to sign me up for this um, casting website called Stage Pool, which is kind of like Spotlight, not quite, a little bit like Spotlight. And yeah, then I started doing commercials and short films. With no training at yeah. all, right? Yeah. No, I so, mean, uh, yeah. No. So you're natural. <laughs> so we're a natural. I mean, mm, if you look back at the stuff that I did, it's it's bad. Yeah, you say that, but that doesn't mean it is. Because I know, I know how it is. Like I, I'm very self-critical about, like I'm very, like especially acting. 
I'm just in general self self critical. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lots of self loathing, but uh, especially with acting, like I, it took me so much time to get used to just watching myself. Yeah. 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 Is it is it the same for you? Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah. I think now, well, I'm still very critical. Like I'll rarely watch something and be like that was really good. It has happened though. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have watched myself and be like, yeah, you did a really good job there. But it doesn't happen often. M most of the time, I'm just, you know, pinpointing little things. I don't, like, I I wouldn't say that I'm, like, mean to myself. I don't, like, tear myself apart and, like, oh, you looked ugly on that. But I definitely criticize my performances a lot. But I'm more used to watching my own face now. You know, like, I used to get really uncomfortable hearing my own voice. But I don't have that anymore. I'm guessing the same for you. Cause, like, I, I think you're getting used to this because, I mean, like, I, I have to cut this. <laughs> True. All the time, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm I think that would be hard. Hearing for me. myself, watching myself all the time, like, and I remember, like, when first, like, when I kind of started watching myself on screen, I was like, "Is this what my face doing when I'm talking? Why would anyone talk to me? It's just and look at me and say that it's hard." Oh, <laughs> but you get used. To it. You do get used to it. Like, it's, it's true because right now, even when I'm like when I'm doing classes. At Working Actors Studio, where we actually met, uh, Shut up. I kind of like I get used to like I can I can be more hopefully objective about my acting because yeah, like it's yeah. not like I'm just hating on what I see in general. Yeah. It's just like okay, like I can kind of pass by that and see like okay, like just look at actual acting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then kind of be like happy or, or unhappy or just like yeah it was alright. Yeah, I think that's like something you have to kind of get used to to get to that point because you have to get over this this because we have this idea in our head of what we look like when we talk and when we act and then obviously when we watch it it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to just get over that mm -hmm. and then in order to be able to objectively judge your own performances. Yeah. Yeah. Well you yeah. know what? <laughs> I think I think we're doing well. I think we're doing <laughs> in, well in terms of that. Uh, but going back to what you said, like it's it's not necessarily you were bad, and you were very young. Yeah, and it was yeah. commercials. Exactly. It's not like I was Oscar okay. Winning. I just remember. Oh my god, I remember being so scared. Yeah. So scared. I used my first couple of experiences on set. I couldn't eat the whole day. I couldn't eat breakfast. I couldn't eat the night before because I was so anxious and nervous and like put so much pressure on myself. Oh my god! This yeah. like a, and but I hope it's not like this anymore. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I still get very nervous if I'm if I'm doing something emotional. I do sometimes get yeah. very anxious. But no, it's not to the Which point. Which doesn't help. Be. Which does not help. <laughs> but uh, not to the point that I used to be. All right. And so you were doing some commercials and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to go to Czech Republic, to Prague. Yeah. To Prague Film School. Yes, exactly. Um, Why there? So in Sweden, you can kind of choose already when you're in high school. I call it high school. It's like 15 to 18. Um, what you want to do. And I did performing arts, theater, dance, singing. Um, and then I was applying for schools for after that to see what I wanted to do. And I was applying to a bunch of like theater schools in Sweden that do like one or two year programs because I thought I wanted to do that for a little while. And then I found Prague Film School because I was always really excited about screen acting. I moved to Prague. I got in mm. and then I moved to Prague. How was it? It was great. It was, it was, it was like the best experience yeah. I've had, I think so far. Yeah. It was mm. amazing because again, um, cause uh, I didn't really know anything about screen acting. The only acting I had done was like high school theater, musical theater, that like drama classes, which isn't really the same thing. So I learned a lot and it was really cool like working together with all the, with the different programs of like the directing program, the cinematography program. Uh, we all created things together, which mm. was, we learned, everyone learned a lot from there. What kind of classes did you do there? Everything is like kind of like a usual, you know, drama school program of like, we did a lot of physical movement stuff, breath work, voice work. Uh, but we also did, we tried like quite a few different techniques. We did um, some Meisner, some Stanislavski, a bit of everything. We had some, we had, a, one thing that's really cool is we had a lot of guest teachers come in from, uh, a lot of people from UK actually, Mel Churcher. Mm -hmm. She was there and visited us and then some other people. We did a lot of improv as well. But then again, mostly it was 
yeah, like screen acting classes. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, how to work with the camera, blah, 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 blah. I remember there was this one really weird class. Oh my goodness. There you had one class called Dialogue with the Inner Partner, I think it was called. I've never done anything like it before and I probably never will again. It was really interesting. Basically, we were all sitting in a row like as an audience and then one person would go up one at a time uh, and like just exist. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that we were supposed to just like be and pretend that we were by ourselves Mm -hmm. in front of people. And like, you didn't have anything to do. You didn't have anything to say. You just like stood there. But then he also wanted us to like express what we were feeling with sounds and movements. It was really, really, I've never seen anything like yeah. it. Strange. But I think it was good because in the sense that you feel so exposed, you're just like, yeah. because, you know, when you're acting, you, you feel like you need to perform and you feel like you have to do something to entertain people. But that just kind of forced us to just like, mm-hmm right this is me i guess i don't know what you want me to do and it was so uncomfortable but yeah i just remember that so how did you feel when you were doing this very uncomfortable very strange yeah because i i was talking about <clears throat> this with boo uh and yeah i had like what very kind of like close to this exercise uh when i like when i did my very first acting class uh, and the teacher, yeah, he gave us this, he gave us this exercise. So basically we're like probably 15 people in a group and everyone just sits in a row. You get into the room, you walk <coughs> in and you just stand in front of people, just stand. And you can't, you can't like put your, you know, like your uh, hands in the pockets. You can't do this. Like you just have to just stand relaxed. If you can be relaxed <laughs> and you just stand like and look at people and they look at you, you can smile if you want. But you should be, but you basically just being exposed. Yeah. And you just feel like you're on the edge of attention of the whole world because everyone is looking at you. And you just like, and you're doing nothing. Yeah. You don't have a script that you can hide behind. Yeah. You can have, like, you just stand there. And you're not allowed to say anything. And you just like, no, you can't, you can't say anything. You just, just stand, just stand that's yeah and you have to stay you know like straight like without you know like just trying to put it's just it's weird and i, I remember my knees were shaking I'm yeah like, <laughs> like it's so scary and he said like this will be the, the scariest thing that you will ever do as an actor it's so weird isn't it and it is it was like after that i did theater i did like some series like so you know some filming i did this and did that did, did different classes and when i did this exercise I like it was so scary for some reason. Yeah. I, like I, I don't know why. Like we because we we just did it like one, two, three times probably. First time was the most uncomfortable. Second time was kind of a bit easier. Third time was even more easy. But like still kind of you still feel like you, because when you were sitting there looking at other people, you can see absolutely every detail like someone goes in and you can see like there's some tension in like in the arm like because they can like it can't relax like you can see everything and then when you do the same you know like they can see everything as well it was weird but yeah it kind of i think it helped (laughs) to a degree (laughs) yeah 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 because yeah you have to just get used to just existing which is the whole Mm -hmm. that's kind of what acting is about yeah yeah just let people see you yeah shady but <laughs> but it, all in all my experience was really really positive and i i would do it again anytime i yeah. loved it i loved it so much and everyone was we became such a great community because everyone was from different countries and everyone was new to the city no one like knew the place no one had any friends so it was just yeah it was really amazing and such a great experience of my first time living abroad by myself you know mm-hmm. and then you came back to stockholm then i came back to stockholm uh, I lived in Stockholm for a year, was doing a little bit some bobs, short films here and there, but then everything kind of died out because COVID happened. Yeah. Which led to me and Alex, but mate, moving here. Why here exactly? Why no? Like what? Why not LA? Why London? Yeah, we thought about LA, applied to school in LA and got in and like did all the research, um, but visas and everything and thought about it really for a long time. But in the end, we decided partly because for money reasons and also just because it's easier. And like if we'd moved to LA, we would have gotten a student visa, but then we wouldn't have been able to work and just would have been a lot harder. But 
uh, yeah, I'm just really glad that we did come here because mm-hmm. yeah, I'm ha- I'm I I'd rather be here. And and how how did you survive here after moving here in between lockdowns? As I understand, right? Like yeah. and, and during COVID, like what did you do? How did you first of all? How did you stay insane? Because I I couldn't. Well, I think we only survived because we had drama school. We had yeah. you know we had a system that we were we were doing things even if it was over zoom and um i did somewhere in the worst lockdown i escaped back home and i would just sat you know but in my parents house and did drama school over zoom for two months um but again if i hadn't had that i don't know what i would have done with myself because mm-hmm. yeah everything was shut down but and at least i still had that even though it wasn't it was like not the ideal uh training at all like i didn't I wouldn't do it again, that experience. But if I hadn't had that, then yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I remember when when the first lockdown hit. What were I, you doing during the lockdown? I well, first of all, I had a job, <laughs> <laughs> and I just oh, went those. to working from the office to working from home. Yeah, and yeah. And basically, that was first couple of months was right. I was like, it's fine. I don't have to travel anywhere. I just stay at home every day and it's fine. But then after two months, I was like, I don't have to travel anywhere. I just, yeah. I'm trapped in this room. I work here. I eat here. I sleep here. I rest here. I just like, it's just, just like a prison cell <laughs> yeah, yeah. with like, with the access to internet. <laughs> yeah. And occasionally you can go out, but like very controlled because you can't walk around for too long. And it's just like, I was, I get, that's when I get fat and depressed. Basically, <laughs> I'm still suffering from that. Like I'm oh still, I know. I honestly, I'm still not. And I, I was saying this on a podcast before. Like I'm still not back to normal me, because yeah. I still kind of didn't. Because <laughs> the world is kind of, kind of back to normal. I'm not because for me, I have way less social life right now. And uh, I was working at the same place up until like last December. <laughs> This is December. Yeah. Uh, and I was still working from home because the company switched to working from home uh, structure. Yeah. So I didn't know I will ever miss like going to the office and yeah. seeing people grown up because I see my kids all the time, but you know, because they live not too far from me. Uh, but, and I love them, of course. <laughs> I love them a lot. But then like you need some grown up connections. You need to, you know, to pe- yes. like some com- communication to people yes. your age ish. And yeah, I, I missed it. And like, I think for the last few years, I'm in this kind of weird place. Yeah, but you're definitely, I don't think you're the only one because no. I feel the same way. I mean, um, because before the lockdown, I was also, I mean, I guess it's because of like the age gap that, I, that I'm in right now, that before lockdown, I was 19 and I was living in Prague and we would party like mm-hmm. every weekend more than every week and, and like it was so social because I had like a hundred people there that were all kind of one big group of friends mm. and then COVID hit and then I moved to London I didn't know anybody I only had Alex and <laughs> since then it's kind of it's kind of the same you know I don't really go out much yeah it's just it's just yeah it's really and I think the older you get the harder it is to also make friends because the less Tell you are in it. situations <laughs> yeah where you socialize with people yeah. or people already have their group of friends and mm-hmm. it's like yeah anyway and hard. for me like i always need a bit more time to kind of like when i meet someone new i'm not like this friendly bubbly you know andre straight away like i need some time to kind of to adjust a little bit like which again makes harder for me to you know to make friends and then now after spending so much time in my room like, because i noticed that sometimes nowadays i i can spend the whole day with talking only to myself. Yeah. And I have to talk to myself because otherwise I'm You're not talking, talking to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and then it's just like, it's, it's weird. And then when I go out now, it's just harder for me to be, you know, like in just, you know, social environment, like in, you know, just communicate because, because I'm like, just like this weird creep with the beer in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But, but no, yeah, I feel the same way. I feel the same mm. way. Well, yeah, well, that, that I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, what drama school did you do here? It's called Drama Studio London. Mm-hmm. It's in Ealing. But I only did the one-year diploma because 
I didn't want to do a whole three three years because I felt honestly I felt like I was excited to like start working. I was ready. I felt like I was ready to get out mm-hmm. there. <laughs> and um, you already did one in Czech Republic. <laughs> and I already studied in yeah. Prague exactly, uh, which I'm really glad I only did one year because I think yeah, doing three years wouldn't have been for me. How um, different was it like the, the the film school here? I mean, like the acting school here in comparison to Prague? Very different. Yeah. Very different. I mean, first of all. The drama school here was mainly theater mm-hmm. and we were working, we were working like on the classics, like we did Shakespeare, Chekhov, Ibsen, mm-hmm. like a lot of Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. And in Prague was very more like modern and film related, which for me, I preferred that. But it was, I think it's really good that I got the, you know, that I got the, I guess the classic drama school training as well. But then again, i didn't really get it fully because we were on Zoom for most of the time mm. and social distancing. Even when we were in person in class, we had to keep two meters apart. Movement classes, we were wearing face shields. So, uh, I know. <laughs> Might have been. It, it, it probably have been some a view. <laughs> just yes, people definitely masks, was. Like walking around and just doing all this weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely was. And then when we were doing... Uh, Yeah, because yeah, because we couldn't wear mask mask when we were doing like singing and stuff like that. So we had these shields, or just like a screen. Anyway, uh, and then you find the working actor studio at some point where yes. we met, as I said before. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> working actor studio. Well, yeah, I had just finished drama school, and I was looking for like acting classes to do every week. And someone on my Instagram, I don't know who, I don't know where, I don't know why, posted something of working actor studio, and then mm-hmm. I went and yeah and. How how did you find your first agent? Uh, I that was I was in drama school just applying to just inviting people to our showcase. Mm-hmm. They did not come to my showcase, which I'm very glad they did. <laughs> they signed me off my showreel. Um, so yeah, I was just you know reaching out to people, um, mm. and yeah, that's how I found them. And yeah, they're really great. I'm happy. Any advice from you, like on how to find uh, your four first acting agents? Uh, when you're fresh out of you know drama school i wish i could give some groundbreaking <laughs> advice i really wish but it's really just you know yeah. like work on your materials i mean obviously nowadays it's really hard to get people to come to see you in person mm-hmm. unless you go to like one of the one of the big drama schools um it's really hard to get people to come see your showcase so yeah have a good show reel um and uh, your show reel, what, what was it I was really lucky. I had a lot of material from Prague Film School because we did a lot of short films there. Yeah. And then also, you know, short films that I did uh, in Sweden. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of material already. Hence why yeah. they, I got lucky and they signed me off the showreel. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it seems like the, the like good showreel is the key. It's good like showreel yeah. is the key. And uh, yeah, obviously good headshots. And then just like, yeah, I just like, you know, Mm. Throw it out, throw throw it out there, and hope that something bounces back. Mm. I wish I could give some groundbreaking advice, but that's really. And uh, in in your experience, what's the difference between uh, basically <coughs> industry in the UK and Sweden and Germany? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know the industry in Germany well at all. I was uh, this year applying to agencies in Berlin, and I went there to meet with a couple. Uh, But uh, sadly, it hasn't worked out yet, but I'm still working on it. Um, but in Sweden, again, it's a lot smaller. It's a lot more like, you know, in, everyone knows everyone. And once you do get a foot in, it it's a lot easier because the people you worked on will most likely be working on the next project as well. And they might, you know, get you in with them, et cetera, et cetera. It's easier in some ways, harder in others. Mm. There's less competition, but there's also less work. And the competition you have is the people that get keep getting called in for the same for uh, the same people that keep call, getting every project. So it's hard. But, but then again, yeah, once you do get the foot in your and you're part of that group, you will be working. But you because you were working there, you were like a series regular. Yeah. Uh, for a whole season. And do you think you did a fairly good job? Do I think I did a fairly good job? <laughs> Probably. <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I did an okay job. But uh, no, I mean, okay, listen, sorry, I'm being too um, 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 modest here. I, I did a great job. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to hear. 
<laughs> no, I did. Um, and the series did well. People liked it. Um, but yeah, it got it has. It's, they're doing a second season now. It got a second season, but sadly, for many reasons, they had to go a different way story wise. What, what, what was the show? How, how it's called it's, in in Swedish and in English? It's called Från Frakten. In Swedish, in English, it's hard. To, it's, it basically means like from the from. So Trakten is like. So the story is about this girl that moves from suburban Stockholm to this tiny, tiny town in the middle of nowhere where like the Swedish farmers live. <laughs> and Trakten is like the word that we use for that. So like, I don't know. What would you say? The... I don't know. I mean, I, I the barely, village. I don't I'm know. barely speaking that she wanted to just like <laughs> <laughs> from Swedish. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no, but yeah, it means, yeah, from the village. Terrible mm. translation. Okay. It yeah, sounds no, it, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Is it from the village or to the village? <laughs> no, okay. from, yeah, yeah, from the village. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's like comedy, funny, lightweight, like feel good, sweet, cute. And you're playing? Vibes. And I play like the local rich mean girl that uh, rides bully. horses and has a, it's a bit of a bully, <laughs> but she's actually nice. Of course, all, all boys alert. are. Spoiler alert. Oh, really? Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, so you, you, you're proud of your work. Well, oh, am I proud of my work? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah I'm proud yeah. of my work. So you kind of, you have your foot in. Well, I guess I have a toe in. Mm -hmm. But the role wasn't big enough and the series wasn't like, I guess, the of the caliber that would have put me in the position where I'm now guaranteed to get work. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's still hard, but it definitely, it helped me, you know, like, yeah, it was a great role, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say that I'm part of the, the group. The group, yeah. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but do, do you do you still do get some self tapes? I guess, I'm guessing like from, yeah. from Sweden. Yeah. Right now, Sweden is very quiet. It's been very quiet for the last like six months more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since the end of last year, it's been very quiet as well. But I'm still but that, that wasn't that wasn't the only project that you did in Sweden. Did you have no. like some smaller roles? Yeah, I had mostly like short films and commercials, but mm -hmm. I did some like small small roles in like bigger series as well. But like we call it, <laughs> I call it Mister Alex, and I call them Mister Schneebly roles. I don't remember why. <laughs> I don't remember why it's like, it has something to do with Mr. Schneebly from School of Rock. School of Rock. I think there's a scene where someone comes in and like says one line mm -hmm. to Mr. Schneebly and then leaves. Mm -hmm. So we call them Mr. Schneebly roles. It's like basically when you appear on a big show, but you have like one line and you're lucky if your scene makes it in. Like, <laughs> so I had a few Mr. Schneebly. Been there. Yeah. In, in Sweden, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you have a, an agent there? right now not not anymore i i did have an agent there for a few years but because it's so small and most of the work that i got well, all of the work that i got in sweden i got by myself through like knowing casting directors or just through luck or even even in sweden it's the it's like so small that even the big big projects get posted on facebook so like mm -hmm. you can audition for hmm. most stuff without an agent interesting all right <clears throat> And you're still looking for an agent in Germany. Yes. Is it like Germany or Europe in general? Europe in general, but I mean, for me, Germany is the ideal place because I speak German. Mm -hmm. I have a German passport. It's it would just be perfect for me to get. <laughs> just just in interesting it. because um, you so you grew up in Sweden. Mm -hmm. You speak Swedish. It's like a language, Swedish language, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you speak German. You speak English. Like, do you have like accent in German and in Swedish because you are so multilingual? No, no, not really. Yeah, so like you, in Germany, you're like you're you know yeah. no one knows that you. I do like sometimes with my German is probably the weakest out of the languages that I speak. But I don't I don't have an accent. Like you couldn't hear when you meet me. People never guess that I'm that I didn't grow up mm -hmm. there. But uh, sometimes I struggle to like. Like if I'm trying to explain something, I'll like forget the words or mm -hmm. like have to think for a bit for a while. It always takes me like two, three days to get into the flow mm -hmm. of um, speaking German. No, uh, still, but like, and it. when you have a script, it's exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. All right, and you did some series here as well with Joe Cole. Yeah, that was that was actually uh, it's a 
British series, mm -hmm. a small light, mm -hmm. and it's on Disney Plus. Um, and but it was actually through a casting director in Prague, funnily enough. Mm. Um, her name is Maya, and I got in touch with her through you know living in Prague, and I I did like a job. I did a, a small job on a, an American series called Whiskey Cavalier when I was living in Prague with her. So she got me the audition. So actually, yeah. Mm. Um, and I, we filmed, I filmed him at Prague for a couple of days. I was there for like three, four days. But How was working with him? It was, well, it was during COVID. So I like, we, I walked onto the set, like the director or I don't remember, someone introduced us to each other. We were like said hi. And then we were put into two different separate tents. So like I, I could barely say I worked with him. I worked with him, but like I didn't speak to him mm -hmm. other than my lines on set mm -hmm. because we were put into two separate tents. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, barely spoke. Did, so. did, did you have a lot of time having... to rehearse? No, not really. No, just basically. No, because it was that like t one day role, like one scene. I I showed up. Um, Hi, this is your this is your uh, co scene partner. Mm -hmm. um, action. <laughs> That's literally how it is. <laughs> and I oh, oh my god, I remember I didn't even know my backstory. I because I play this like young woman who comes in and takes a baby from him and I, I haven't seen the series actually but the story is something like um they're rescuing children whatever it is they're doing they're, it's illegal um I, I think it's it's isn't during like world war ii yeah. and they're like kind of like are they rescuing jewish uh, kids or they're yeah. jewish themselves it's i it's one of them they're yeah. the good guys anyway yeah. but it's illegal what they're yeah. doing and I, he like gives me this baby and we have a scene and then, you know, mm -hmm. go with the baby. And I didn't know what my backstory was. I didn't know if it was my child. I didn't know if I knew the child. I didn't know if I knew him. I just knew that I was pretending to be his um, girlfriend or something to like look like to cover up in yeah. case someone was watching yeah. us. So the scene was very like, hush, hush, like you have to, like it's, it's high stakes, but you have mm -hmm. to pretend like you're just casually strolling yeah, yeah, yeah. with your baby through the park. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was interesting. It was fun. Can, can you compare the basically life on set in the UK in comparison to Sweden? Well, from because it's it, it's not really a fair comparison completely because the sets that I've been on here have been much bigger mm -hmm. and I've had smaller roles. Whereas in Sweden, the sets have been smaller and I've had bigger okay. roles. So it Sweden has felt more like kind of like, it's like a family vibe. Like you're on set, you're just hanging out with your friends. There's no pressure. You're just like creating something together. That's how I felt there. Um, and even the bigger sets I've been on in Sweden uh, felt like that actually. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I haven't been on a huge budget set in Sweden. So I couldn't really compare it fairly. Whereas here, it's a lot more like you show up on the day, you get put in your trailer and you do the job and then you get sent home. Mm -hmm. But again, it would be completely different if you had a big role, I assume. Yeah, I guess so. Because you're there every day and you get mm -hmm. to know the people you work with. So mm -hmm. I can't really give a fair comparison. But I do think in general, Sweden is a lot smaller in that sense and people know each other from before and you've at least worked with them. Every person that's there, you've probably at least worked on some project before or at least seen them before, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you still get nervous when you have to do the job? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with it? Don't you? I. Uh, <laughs> it depends. You know what? Actually, it depends. I. I noticed that I get more nervous in class oh, than no, on a I'm job sad. because. Really. Uh, weirdly, yes. For some reason, I don't know why. Uh, I did one project this year. Uh, it's not a lot of projects. Like, unfortunately, right now, as I said many times, like I kind of feel like it's very hard to call yourself an actor when you do one project a year and like I don't mean like big project but small project because it's just like last few years were tough for me personally like yeah. in acting uh in general and not enough additions well even less uh, actual projects and last year i did a project that like it just was basically this the the, the one that you like like you said just one line yeah just basically one mr. line Schneebly. <laughs> yeah mr Schneebly. uh and this year i did a project uh, it's it's like a third season that i do uh it's the inside man which is a weird project because it's a series but it's for the uh cyber security company 
mm-hmm. and only clients and workers of this company can see it, which is like up to 4 million viewers right now, I think, like watched it. Uh, but no one else can see it. <laughs> like no, no one else can watch this one. But it's like, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing that I did like for a while. So this year, and I did this job. And because I don't do this often, unfortunately, apart from doing classes, like I work, like I, I act in class, which is like, you're not an actor, you're a student. No, <laughs> you are though. Uh, and then, so I was doing this job and I messaged Lee about it. Like at some point I was just doing it. I was there, I was there on set and I just caught myself that like, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Like I hit the marks. I know my lines. I came prepared. I know what I'm doing. I I can follow continuity. I like I I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am an actor for fuck's yeah. sake. <laughs> so I uh, and I notice it like I'm not I'm not I'm not nervous because like I mean you can be nervous like maybe on like very first take a little bit, but like again, like you spend so much time on set when you're filming, like that by the time when they say action, you spend four hours in the green room. Like, or like even longer, you spend like some time, like talking to people, talking to like, you know, first AD, like to, 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 to director, like to your scene partners, to just people like runners and everyone. So by the end, like when it's time for you to shoot, you kind of like, yeah, it's, yeah, I know <laughs> it's a job. You cast me. So you probably, you like me, <laughs> you know what I can do. So I think I don't get nervous. On the job, like that's really I mean, good. like a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Like, of course, it's like there's still like a little bit, like tingly feeling, like because you're doing the thing that you like, and you want to do a good job. Mm-hmm. But I was like usually more nervous in class. Hmm, that's very interesting. Yeah, I think it depends. Yeah, it depends. I definitely still get nervous. Yeah. I think more so if it's a small role like that, if you show up for one scene, especially with like an actor that you know is quite mm-hmm. well known and you respect them and no, you're like, yeah. uh, want to do a good job and you have like maybe five takes to show them your entire range. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes me more nervous versus if you show up for a job that you're going to be on for weeks and you know you're going to get to know these people and mm-hmm. you know that, you know, it's important to them that you do a good job. So they're not just going to like rush over you. Yeah. They're going to, you know, give you, that makes me less nervous then. Mm. Yeah. No, I think um, it's theater that gets me nervous. Like in the, mm. like when I do theater, like in the, like, you know, very beginning when it just kind of like start your first scenes or whatever, then you get into it and you're fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. Uh, so how, how do you deal with nerves? I don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just a mess. I'm just a <laughs> complete mess. No. Um, I mm, sometimes get really anxious if it's like high stakes and it's a character I really care about and it's emotionally, you know, quite intense. I get very anxious and I have to like, well, first of all, I, I, I don't drink coffee. I can't drink coffee when I'm acting because I get hyper and already. anxious, even more anxious than I already am. <laughs> so that I don't drink coffee. I try to when I'm not in the middle of a scene or like right now about to get into the scene or about to say action, I try to not think about what's going on in the scene, Mm -hmm. uh, which could sound counterproductive, I guess. But but having that separation is really important, I think, because otherwise I will just be all day. Because when you're on set, you wait a lot, right? You wait around a lot. And there's a lot of just sitting and waiting for you to go on set or sitting in your trailer and waiting for makeup, blah, 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 blah. So if you in those moments are completely like still in the scene you just you but you're never yourself you never leave that state of nervous energy does Mm -hmm. that make sense Mm -hmm. so i have to really try to be to not think about the job or the role in between so that i then have my energy for when i'm doing that rather than wasting it all by being nervous and anxious around everything and being like oh this and i have to remember that and blah 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 and that way you can then mm-hmm. have all your focus left when you actually go into the scene. Yeah. Okay. But it's like, it's, it's hard. I mean, like if you just have so it's much, so you hard. have so much time to be worried and you think about like, I shouldn't be worried right now. Yeah. <laughs> you get worried. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have to like have distractions. I don't know. Like you have to distract yourself. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. <laughs> How do you distract yourself? Well, the best thing is if you have, you know, if you're friends with the people that you're working with, yeah. you can hang out. Like when I was on the short film that we talked about earlier, the German one, uh, that little boy that was playing my brother, like he was like my distraction because we became really good friends and he would always like, I don't know, you know, he's like, he was like 12. So he, he wasn't thinking about, he wasn't thinking about, oh, what is my character? Like, what's my objective? Am I doing this mm -hmm. character justice? You know, so that really helped me to like not get so nervous and get stressed about it because I was always distracted by him. And I remember when he was not on set, I was so anxious. And I was like, oh, really? yeah. Oh, interesting. It was really, it was really sweet. Yeah. So let, let's talk about the short film, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, is called Every, everybody or everyone Every, is living in the end everybody leaves in the end <laughs> close enough <laughs> you did well I was, yeah. yeah i'm impressed that you, uh, knew, you knew what i was talking about and this is short film shot in germany yes yeah and it uh i haven't seen it unfortunately yes. because as i understand it's now on like in, on festivals and everything yes. i've seen the trailer it looks amazing it looks like very very professional done because i've seen different short films in my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. And I've seen short films that look like it's just, well, why did he even do that? <laughs> <laughs> why did you even do it? <laughs> yes. Why did he even, like, come on. Like, I, no, no, I understand why you did it, but why do you show it to people? Oh, <laughs> and I've fair. seen the short films that, like, just look, look all right. Yeah. This one looks very, extremely professional. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like it should be a feature film. They put... It should be. It should. Can you tell that to the world? It should be a feature. <laughs> I'm telling you right no, now, it should be feasible. But they so, put, yeah, yeah, no, they're amazing. Like I was so lucky to do that because the people that worked on that are amazing. They won the German Cinematography Award, like the main German Cinematography for, Award for, for the this. short film. For yeah? the short film, yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah. And like what? <clears throat> just in short, without spoilers, because we'll all see it. What's it, what's it about? Uh, what is your role? And how did you prepare for this one? <laughs> so um, it's about this young girl who I never know how to say this because I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, in German, it's called Jugendvollzugsanstalt. It's basically like, it's like prison, but for young people. So it's not prison. She's done something bad. Yeah. She, uh, she's, you know, she's dealing with it. Anyway. Uh, and uh, her mother dies, so she gets to leave for one day to go to the funeral. But then she runs away. Mm -hmm. So she steals the mother's ashes and runs away. And oh, yeah, and the, she is so the film plays in Germany, but the character's background is that she's from Sweden, hence why I got involved with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so she finds her little brother who's been adopted by a different family and they run away together and yeah that's mm -hmm. it we can i'm not gonna say more than that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, about 20 minutes long yeah it's yeah how long did you shoot it we shot it for about two weeks i think something around there because we went back for week reshoots as well so like two two and a half weeks altogether, something like that and how long did you prepare how um well the the really cool thing about this was that we got to rehearse for um a whole week uh so we were we shot it in like south germany but the little boy that plays my brother he was from berlin so we rehearsed i went to berlin for a week and we rehearsed for a whole week which is amazing um and really cool so yeah we basically just sat in a room the three of us mm -hmm. for a week and like did a bunch of weird shit and talked about the script and uh, told me about the weird shit. Some... I always <laughs> want to talk about the weird shit. The weird shit we did because we worked a lot with animals so we did a lot of like physical exercises you, you didn't work with actual animals no i mean that makes no sense as in like we there's like within acting whatever there's like animal work so you can like relate your character to an animal and like how they would move how they would talk how they would behave maybe so my character was a cat and his character was a koala bear so we did like exercises of like you know the physicality of a cat Thanks very so. very methody very method methody, acting. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, so how, really like, how, how did it go? So you were in a room and do you kind of like how you had to pretend that you were like walking like yeah. a cat, like or on all fours or just like, you know, just, you know, just walking on. Basically, you start out like basically acting like you're a cat, like on all fours mm -hmm. and meowing. Mm -hmm. And then. <laughs> I wish there was a date. <laughs> There I should be a tape. Don't think there Tell is. Tell me there's a tape. I don't think there is. I do have clips from our rehearsals though, but not from the, the animal stuff. 
Yeah. No, but, and then you kind of, you know, and then you tone it down and then you slowly like start to stand up and you become, and you basically, the, the idea is that the physicality kind of stays in your body, even mm-hmm. when you're back moving on two legs, mm-hmm. which, yeah, you know, consciously you're not thinking about like when I'm doing a scene, I'm not thinking about, oh, I'm going to go. <laughs> 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 but it still stays like it's there and it helps you get an idea of maybe how she would react to things or just how she feels inside because you know cats feel a certain way and they watch oh yeah she was also very like watchful like she's very attentive everything that's going on around her without necessarily showing it so Mm -hmm. that yeah that really helped with that Mm -hmm. so it kind of stayed in your performance in a way yeah yeah without I mean, yeah, watch it. You tell me if I look like I'm spitting furballs. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of movie. <laughs> Not that kind of movie. Don't no. worry. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. And so is, is this one of the best things that you did? As, it's one of my favorite things that I did. Yeah. 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 It's one of the things that I'm the most proud of. Mm. And I feel like, yeah, because I feel like I got to do what I really wanted to do with it, and it was. And you're you're the lead in this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what kind of like, what kind of type of projects you would be the most attracted to, apart from my podcast, obviously. Apart from this, which is number one. <laughs> oh, uh... Stop it. <laughs> um. Yes, of course I do. I mean, I want to do everything, but mostly I just, I'm very, I'm very attracted by quite, you know, quite um, stripped down stories that are more about, you know, like relationships, I guess. Like um, some of my favorite directors are Lucas Don't and Sean Baker, who... Again, I had to watch this most recent film because I haven't seen it, but it won and can. And I, I love his films. It's like, I don't know, like, I know they're not very famous, so me saying these names might mean nothing to you. But films like Call Me By Your Name, I love, I also love Luca Guadagnino, characters and relationships and that are, yeah. I would love to be in a period drama. Mm. That would be fun. Have you seen The Great? The Great with Al Fanning. That's one of like that's like no, a dream not role. Yet, like, not yet. That role but she plays in like, that series is amazing. But the Great, I I haven't seen it, so I might be wrong. But like, it's not really kind of like historically accurate. Like no, it's just like it's it's, it's a satire like or even yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like it like it, everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not like historical drama. Yeah. it's just just like a fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love those type of things mm-hmm. as well. Uh, the favorite as well with Olivia Coleman. Mm, that's yeah. a little bit like that as well yeah yeah, yeah. i love that I love that so basically more like down to earth raw stories yeah. yeah what about what about like sci-fi fantasy oh honestly? yeah i'd love that too you yeah. see like yeah i would love that because it's it's like my inner child is obsessed with that like little charlene would like that would be her dream yeah to do something like that yeah like harry potter <laughs> <laughs> i mean or, come on harry potter we all want some harry potter yeah <laughs> yeah and how is it going right now with like how often do you get auditions yeah it's on and off up and down like mm-hmm. since last year the end of last year was very quiet um but yeah now it's picking up again but it's always like one week you get like three self tips and then you don't get anything for a month and mm-hmm. it's always like that Mm. up and down for me and how do you deal with that how do you deal with that's, rejection that's a, oh yeah that's a good question this, I, I've, I've only recently like started to really think about this because for, I've realized that I, like I need to figure out a way to deal with it because I had like a really low period at the beginning of this year where everything just nothing went my way like so many things that I thought were like opportunities that I thought were gonna happen everything just like crashed down and I was uh, I was in Berlin for a while, like meeting with some agencies, um, and like it was looking really good, uh, and I really thought I was gonna sign with this one really cool agency, but then it didn't happen, and a lot of other things as well, like job opportunities that looked like they were gonna happen and then didn't, and they all kind of happened at once. So I was like, oh god, and I like was like really miserable for like a few weeks, but then 
I always think, I always think like you either like you, I, I chose to do this and I know, I know, I knew all the, the, you know, hard parts of it. So you either kind of, but did you though? Did you really? Like, I, that's just, true. I guess you can never, you know it, but you never like, I mean, you know, like, and know especially it. because, you know, when you started, like you were very young uh, and at that point you don't really realize what you're it you're completely means. delusional i was completely delusional i mean please i thought my first audition i there was like i remember it was an open my first ever audition i went to was an open casting call and there was like 300 kids there and i was like yeah i'm gonna get it yeah i'm gonna get it <laughs> i went to like six of those and i never even got a call back <laughs> yeah no you're, you're right you're right mm. like I guess you don't really know it until you experience it. But what I'm trying to say is like, you either let it go and keep going or you stop when you do something else. Because there's no point in being stuck in the in-between of being like, feeling, you know, miserable and feeling, oh, like, this is so hard and like, I hate it. Why am I doing it? Because then you, then you either, you quit and do something else or you just, you're like, yeah, it, that's what it is and you keep going. Mm -hmm. I try to think like that. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but... What, what, what motivates you to keep going? Just... I just... Every, I just can't imagine not doing it. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I do, yeah. I Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... It's like... It doesn't really exist in my brain. Like, I have thought... Of course, it's popped up, like... When you're going through some... Like, a really period of like just nothing happening and just everything going to shit and you just like feel really like it's, you feel really low in your confidence and you haven't really received any good feedback in a really long time but, and then the thought pops in your head like why am I even doing this like should I quit but that just doesn't like mm. it never goes further than that you know what I mean like every time I think I'm like no obviously not how 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 do you deal how do you deal with rejection like did you did you find a way to deal with the rejection no, no <laughs> have <like> you? <laughs> I, to a degree, I mean, like, to a degree, yes, I just got used to it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you just, no, you know, I haven't really found a way to deal with it. You just deal with it when it comes. There's no, like, from, I don't have, like, a, a, you just have to move on to the next thing. It just, how, like, how I deal with rejection and trying not to, put my hopes too high you yeah know, because so sometimes what it like when you do the self tape i do the self tape and then like that's it i sent it i forgot about it i'm not thinking about it like sometimes it just pops in my head like oh well oh. and then they're like no 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 and then I'm just like okay i just forget about it and mm -hmm. then the hardest way like hard, hardest case is when you get the call back mm -hmm. and then maybe you have another self tape like and another self tape because once i went through three stages of self tape yeah. for one project and that's where like at that point i was like yes i'm gonna like I, it's gonna happen please and then it's not happened <laughs> it, it, it didn't happen then I'm like okay great so another another yeah you know what i think i think what i this isn't all like i can't i have to be in a very, I think, high place where my confidence is really high. But the way for me is just like being delusional, like as in not delusional, but thinking like hopeful in the sense that if they didn't, if you didn't get it, I didn't get it. Oh, OK. They just either they. Um, <laughs> wait, how am I going to say this? I'm trying to, like, either they like, oh, they just didn't know that that obviously I was the right choice they just made a mistake <laughs> or well if you didn't if you didn't want me then I wouldn't want to work with them either because obviously you want to work with people that are really excited to work with you mm -hmm. that's just really like it doesn't always work because it only works if you think really highly of yourself but you can fake it till you make it you know mm -hmm. what I mean yeah but I mean like sometimes from what I learned as well uh what I've learned it's just it's not always about how good you are no, it's, it's, it's like you just, no, it's you know, not. You're like your face is too fat, so no. But the acting is good. And <laughs> even <laughs> like you just don't like how you look. <laughs> yeah, but even even that sometimes it like has literally nothing to do with you. Sometimes it's just oh, but um, 
this person was already in this and this and this person already knows the director or like oh we you know like sometimes it has completely different reasons sometimes it has to do with money like or you know the amount of instagram followers you have so i think you just like when i do a self tape or an audition i try to just go in and again it doesn't i can't always do it but i try to just go in and do what i want to do with it because what you what's really easy to sink into is to like oh, okay, this is the script. I'm going to read the character description. This is what they're looking for. And I'm going to try to be like that. And, um, you know, I think that's, there's, n it doesn't really help to try and think like that because then you're going to just be the same as everyone else, but someone else is going to be that specific thing more than you. Whereas if you just do it the way you want to do it mm -hmm. and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to do it like this. And then if you don't get it, you can be like, that's fine. Mm -hmm. They just didn't like, the way I did it, they which just is don't okay. like me the way I am. That's it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we just had maybe different creative opinions on yeah. what this world is going to be, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't no, know. I do, I do, I do. I understand. I understand. It just it's still kind of like, uh, as I said a lot on, on this podcast, there's a there is a project that I auditioned for nine times. Nine, nine times for nine different roles i did the self tape are you kidding me and they even like i th I know i was shortlisted for like once one of those times and like and the network chose another guy but like nine times and you feel like just can you already give you know what i can bring to the table you've seen nine tapes but you know me. was it different directors every time it's a series so maybe yeah i don't know well because um, the casting director obviously really likes you mm -hmm. so that's good yeah i think so i think so I oh think god it's just, we'll, we'll, we'll it might see. be that it was like a different director and they always wanted to see you do that oh that's so frustrating and you start to feel like oh um, no that's no awful. don't get me wrong like because i told to my agent like b before uh I, I said like okay i did seven tapes for them next time they ask for one can you just send any of those yeah. that i did and then when they ask for two more like of course i'll do it of course you'll do <laughs> it you're not gonna say no it's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it just it just it can be so frustrating it like it's, really frustrating. and it it's a good sign because if casting directors keeps coming Absolutely. to you like it's just like it's a good sign or they're just out of choice <laughs> uh no andre no <laughs> but you kind of like yeah well now it's like well now this one is going to be the one but i did not i think the 10th is the one that's horrible <laughs> so oh my maybe gosh. next year <laughs> is that series still going uh as, as far as i know yes as far as i know i think uh there was a little like not a come scandal on they almost owe you a part in this i know right <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Maybe they they saw me like on some tapes for like smaller roles. They're like, oh no, this guy. We want him for something juicier. But uh, I don't, I don't. maybe <laughs> you never know. Listen, you never know. It might be like the, just a blessing in disguise that you didn't get those because that means that you can still get a cooler one. <sighs> well, yeah. Let's not put my hopes to. <laughs> to okay, I... true. We get the, but you see, <laughs> listen. I did. Okay, I last year, last winter, no summer. Yeah. I can't talk. Um, I got like a role that was like my dream role like i i was like I, i'm ready to quit after this like it was it was like so amazing it was something like i, I just didn't think would happen to me for another like 10 20 years and i was so excited about it you know and i i, I always do the same thing where i'm like oh you can't let yourself get too excited like blah 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 and then what do you think happened it got cancelled because of the strikes yeah. well it got put on hold which kind of means it, was... it could come back but it's been a year so yeah and i was but you were already cast yeah i was already cast. Oh my God. i had the contract and everything like my agent said like what's it called they had negotiated the contract it was all done oh my god i know i didn't remember in this world of constant rejection to get this and then to get it and just can't to, oh and it was torture as well because um I got it in like March and they were meant to film in June and then it got postponed to July and then September and then November and then cancelled. And it was just, you know, it's like dangling the carrot in front of your face and then just like, but I mean, obviously it, you learn a lot from that. That's, that's a torture. Like it's why, like coming back to that, why would you want to do that? <laughs> I don't know. And then you think because you and you just think like, what's the point? Because you go your whole life 
dreaming about getting a role like this, and mm-hmm. then you get the role, mm-hmm. and it still doesn't happen. But mm-hmm. this happens all the time. Yeah. That's the sad thing. Like this happens. Like I know. Oh my god. Um, my other flatmate, his friend is a an actor, and he's a teacher at Met Film School, and he was uh cast in like a really big role in like I don't want to say that it. Because I'm not sure it was 100% right. But it was a big studio. Um, and he was like the main villain. And he was at the premiere. Mm-hmm. They had filmed it. At the premiere, on the red carpet, the director comes up to him and goes, I'm so sorry, but we cut you out. I've been there. You've been there? I mean, I, I never had like a big role, but I had like a small role with a very like well-known actress uh... in, the, in, the, uh, in the series that is, you know, a series that, coming from from like this uh, little mouse studio oh boy. and basically like basically i was like yes that's great i will have this like it's it's a small scene it's a good actress mm-hmm. it will look so good yeah. in my portfolio it will look yeah. so good in my showreel i'm watching the first episode and i see like oh well that's where my scene was supposed to be no! and not like, and I, was no! waiting, I was waiting for a year <laughs> It's so unfair. I know, I know, and it happens all the time. I've heard, I've heard, like it shocked me. I'm not sure, like if it's true or not. But one of my most favorite films is Love Actually. Mm -hmm. You know this film? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like one of like for me, it's the best Christmas film. And apparently, there was a whole other, like I think one or two storylines in the film that got completely cut out. (laughs) <laughs> really? With like other with other actors? Yeah, I mean, like maybe for, for some of the actors that we've seen as background actors, maybe they also had some kind of like you know storyline, yeah. or yeah. or like it was just completely two other like other actors who had uh, their own arcs, but it was completely cut off. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. You have to like you have to find ways to 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 deal with that. Mm-hmm. And I think in a way, it's probably good for me that this happened to me now because. Mm-hmm. Again, knowing like, I luckily, I didn't make the mistake of telling people yet. That's one thing I'm like, thank God I was clever enough not to go around and like, I didn't even tell my mom. I told her, oh, like, I told her I got a really exciting opportunity, but I don't want to tell you about it yet because it's not like set in stone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like if I had been like, you know, telling people and then I have to tell everyone, yeah, I got canceled. Ouch. Mm -hmm. You have to be so careful. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't careful. I told everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh. then the thing is, like, my friend, he was also got in this, he was cast in the same series. Uh, he wasn't got out. And, uh, like, he was like, let's, he was like, let's do this. Let's see the premiere of the first episode. It, at mine, like, we'll do the, you know, like, big screen. And I was like, you know what? And I don't know why, but I, but I had this kind of feeling for like a few months before. Uh, it came out. I, th- I had this feeling like I might be cut out. I might be really. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, it was cut out. Yeah, and I was like, well, what are you gonna do? I get paid, yeah. which is nice, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> but coming back to you, so <laughs> back to me. <laughs> but without uh, without going into too many details, you said this is this would be like the role of your dream. And it made me realize that you know it's gonna if I'm gonna keep doing this, this is gonna happen probably a lot more. So. And no, we have to find a way to deal with it. But I think that's not just going to happen a lot more. It's just like the constant thing that happens almost all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy to just be like, oh, yeah, like, and just throw it away. Um, But it still kind of affects you in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. So what's your process right now? (laughs) My process right now, like I have to, when you're not self-taping, you have to, like we always hear, you know, we always hear uh, people tell you as an actor, um, you can't just sit and wait for the phone to call. And it, and like in my head, that always meant, um, it always meant, oh yeah, you have to like be doing things yourself. You have to be proactive, which, it, and it does mean that, like you have to, you know, I don't know, go to workshops, speak to email, reach out, email casting directors, create, make your own stuff. But it also means I think you have to like have a life and have things that give you joy so that you're not just, when you're not working, you're not just sitting there like, oh, have they emailed me yet? Oh, mm-hmm. did I get that call back? Mm-hmm. Oh, did that casting? Oh yeah. Oh, oh then I gone is I'm now. Like, 
you know, like we have to have things that distract us as well. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, like write our own stuff, but like, not because I feel like, oh, I have to write my own stuff to put myself out there because no one's casting me, but write my own stuff because I want to and because it's fun. Uh, or even like go to acting classes. Like it's kind of, that's my hobby, you know? I don't just go to acting classes so I get better. I just do it because it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It keeps us. And there's some social life as well. <laughs> yeah. Social life. Yeah. yeah. How's your social life? How's my social life? <laughs> really? Did you have to get that personal on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, I was saying to you earlier about how, oh, yeah, you were saying how, like, you feel like you're a different per person, like, you're still kind of trying to recover from after COVID. Yeah. I feel, I feel the same way. Like, it was tricky to meet people. It was tricky to make friends, even in drama school, because it was during lockdown and we weren't allowed. We literally were not allowed to hang out outside of school. So it was really hard to make friends and stuff. So, yeah, I'm still trying to recover from mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah. Meeting people and it's, yeah. It's, is yeah. it something that you're working on? Like on kind of like getting yeah. back to your normal you? I think Or is so. it just like it's just somewhere back there? No, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to go back. I don't think I'm, I'm too old now to go back to the, <laughs> to the Charlene that was partying every weekend. I don't think I can do that anymore. <laughs> but I do want to, you know, have a bit more of... Like, you know, I want to, I'm trying to make an effort to spend more time with people because mm -hmm. it's easy to just like, you know, I'm tired after work. Oh no, I can't be asked. But like to eat, to like make an effort to do it because I think it's, it's important. It's necessary for us to feel. We're social animals. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what does your family think about your path? Oh yeah. Path? My family, they don't. In the best way possible, they don't really care. Mm. As in, they've never, they've always been like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. do your thing. And it's also like, even ever since I was, ever since I started doing it, it was always me like taking the initiative. I never, you know, they never had. Well, my mom did drive me around everywhere, but I was the one making sure it happened. So I think that's why they kind of, you know, they were like, yeah, she's just doing her own thing. Mm -hmm. So. And I don't think may they probably didn't think that I would take it this far, <laughs> which is maybe also another reason why they were like, yeah, sure. Just let her, you know, we'll just drive her to Stockholm. This is like four hour drive every two weeks. But, uh, but yeah, no, I think they're, you know, they're just happy that I'm doing something that mm. I want to be doing. They yeah, nice. So it's like, it, it is in a way it is support. <laughs> of course. They, yeah. Yeah. They're supportive in the sense that they're just, yeah. Mm. whatever mm. you know <laughs> oh, yeah i know no i mean like I, I was like enough to be fair like to have people around me who support me like in, in this way and, yeah. and i kind of i decided to go like i want to do acting like after 30. <laughs> yeah how long have you been acting actually uh, well i did this very first class for dummies uh, <laughs> acting for, for beginners <laughs> <laughs> for beginners uh the the very first i did like the one that i told you about like with this like exercise when you just stand in front of people oh, yeah. like the, uh it was uh, i think now eight seven or eight years ago yeah okay so you've so, been doing this for a while as well yeah probably like same with me well i mean to a degree count. because you, you i think you like because when I started, you started doing it like without training, but you did commercials and stuff. Mm. And I went to the, you know, acting for dummies. The acting for dummies. <laughs> and, then, and then I didn't do anything for like, I, I kind of like, I, I just did some classes, then again, some classes. And then I took like a little time off, not like in the way time off. I thought like, well, now I know everything. I'm an actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I <Yeah>. was not. <laughs> uh, and then... I went to Identity and then I was doing work at the studio, like, and just like trying to basically to do that. But at the same time, you see, I, 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 I had a constant uh, day job. So I was working as a designer <laughs> since 2003 uh, back in Latvia and then when I came here. So I was doing that. It's kind of like acting was like my side hustle all this time like mm. and obviously i always want to kind of like hopefully it will become my main thing that i do which yeah. is very hard it's like as lee says lee lomas yeah like he says like well like there's like one percent 
of, of actors who actually act like and work and just basically survive by just acting, which is I don't know. It's it's it's, it's hard to imagine. So yeah, but yeah, it's it's been it's been a while now. It's been a while. The only problem is like when you know it's I still have this complex because when. I meet new people and my friends introduce me and they say like Andrew is an actor. I'm like, I'm stop it, come on. Like because if people will ask me like, could I see you anywhere? I'm like yeah, I was... Do you do you watch some Russian French theater in London? So probably not. <laughs> I was actually talking about this with Alex again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um like just last week because I have I also work at so I do drama teaching for kids, blah blah blah. I also sometimes I work at this hotel as like an events uh, waitress, mm -hmm. like every now and then. Um serving rich people. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> and um you know, like you meet I meet so many different people there every week and when they ask me what do I what I do, sometimes I even don't I like lie and I make like something or I just say like I'm a teacher and then they'll just think, you know, oh yeah, she's just and they won't question anymore. We shouldn't do that. I know we shouldn't, but if I do, and I was saying like if I tell them I'm an actress and they're gonna ask so many questions that I don't wanna answer and sometimes I like you know how some people are like know nothing about it when they start to like give you advice and they're like, Oh, have you ever applied to Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I'm an act actress so, at, at Netflix. <laughs> no, but have you ever applied to Netflix? Um, but basically, what we were saying is like, you have to say it with confidence because if you say it like apologetically, if you say it like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm an actor, ha ha ha, don't please don't ask me any more questions, yeah. then it like gives them space to be like, you know, to try and like have, I don't have, know, have you know, tried like, normal job? Yeah, exactly. So you have to just say it with confidence, be like, yeah, I'm an actor. And then yeah. if they ask questions, be like, yeah, I've been on this and this and this. And we can, like, even if it's something they've probably never seen, like, mm -hmm. just say it as if it's, yeah, this. And then mm -hmm. they can feel silly for not having seen it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we just have to fake it till we make it, I feel like. I think that's the mindset I'm trying to put myself in now. Yeah. I mean, like, faking, it's like, no, we're, we're not faking no, it. Because we had education. We're studying it. Like, we were trying to... You know, we're working on our craft. Yeah, <laughs> but we do. We, and we do do it. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's we not do even work. faking. It's just like trying to get an opportunity to show what you know. Yeah. How do you prepare for the role? Um. Yeah, it's different every time. I don't have like a set. I I wish I could say that you have like oh I have a technique that I do this and this and step by step by step. But it's different every time. Sometimes it's a role that I'm like I have no idea what I'm doing here, so I have to kind of think a bit about. Um, yeah, about, I don't know, like, objectives, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes, uh, I, re I read something and I'm like, oh, this is, I know exactly what, like, what this is like. I know exactly what to take from. And then I don't really have to think much, but yeah, it's really different every time. Mm -hmm. So there is no, like, regular process that you do? Not really. Not really. I'm very, I like, I'm very, I'm quite physical, hence also the animal. Although that was my idea, the mm -hmm. whole animal. Like, like, I've never done that before. But I love doing, I love like physical stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, like it helps me a lot more than rather than if I were to sit down and write out, okay, like this is her objective, intention, tactics. Yeah. By the way, not criticizing Lee's technique. I love Lee's technique. That sounded like I was like, this is, yeah. no. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll cut it out and send it to Lee. But it doesn't. Oh no! <laughs> but it doesn't. Um, like it doesn't help me as much as if I like am, for example, like with another person, like improvising something, or mm -hmm. even just like yeah, like just tactile things. Getting the costume on makes such a big difference. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as I have a costume, that that kind of makes all the difference for me. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Are there any things that you do that you think no no one does? That I do that no well, one does. Yeah, when you when you prepare, apart from pretending to be a cat and you know, <laughs> apart from <laughs> spitting furballs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's really just. It's kind of. I hate that I sound so like um and cliche, but it's just like being in the moment, isn't it? Mm. And no, it, I mean. Yeah, I understand what you mean by... by, by Whatever the like other specific. actor gives you is going to change what you do as well. Yeah. Ideally, if you, yeah, I think I, it of should. Of course, it should. Idea, <laughs> it should. Yeah. And let's, let's quickly talk about your uh, experience as a director. 
My turn is harder. Yes. So again, um, if you Google my name, it says that I'm a film director, which is definitely not really correct. I don't know why that weighs so much heavier than the acting um, mm -hmm. stuff, but that's what's on there. Um, because Alex and I wrote a film together. He acted in it. I directed it. We we directed it together, but because he was acting in it, he couldn't really have the overview. So I directed it uh, with him. And uh, what was your experience? Yeah. First of all, like what 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 did uh, apart from directing uh, an actor, mm -hmm. like did you were you involved like in planning like the scenes, uh, yeah. like, scheduling, like in all all of Everything. that stuff? I mean, it was low budget. It was you know we did it in our flat that we used to live in with you know most the crew were friends of ours mm -hmm. um so we did everything like we produced it ourselves and uh yeah how was so the experience it was it was it was really good because it was i don't actually remember it being that stressful which is crazy because filmmaking <laughs> is supposed to be stressful yeah but I mean, we also did it over a very long, like it, we worked on it for like a year before we started filming it. So, and because it was with Alex and I, we, we, Alex and I have been working on stuff, working together since we met like six years ago. So we really know each other really well. And he knows what I want. I know what he wants. Hence why it really worked that way that he could act in it. And I directed it because I knew exactly what he wanted to get out from it, out of it. And, um, and he doesn't have to worry, like he can trust what I say in my direction because he knows that we're on the same page. So, which I mean, I think that's important with film, any filmmaking in general, but it just came, it was easy for us because we know each other so well. So, um, like I said, I don't think I would have done that. I don't think I've never had felt the urge to be like, okay, I'm going to direct this because I want to be a director. It was just, it just kind of happened mm -hmm. because, um, yeah, it just kind of happened and mm -hmm. it was really, it was fun. It was. It was hard, but it was fun. The hardest part was the editing. Yeah. Did you do it yourself? No, I, we had like a guy, a guy, we had a guy. We had, we had, a guy. We had an editor, but although Alex did, did do some of himself as well, mm -hmm. but luckily I didn't have to do that much because yeah, that's not, not for me. Yeah. I just sat next to him and was like, yeah, this is, and this is, and this yeah. is. And, uh, <laughs> so, so what's happening with the short film now? It's, uh, uh, it's going to festivals. It's mm -hmm. doing his rounds. It's doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we won some it's stuff. It's called? It's called 43 York Road. Yeah. It's not available anywhere though, so. I mean, yet. maybe at some point when it is available, you'll. Well, you'll find the yeah. link in the description. Link if, in the description. We don't forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But. All right. So that's the, your experience with, with that. We didn't put much pressure on ourselves doing it because, again, we didn't like have any goals in mind with it because you know it was our first time making something, so it was just a learning process, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any inspirations for you in the acting world? Mm -hmm. I have so many. I wish I prepared this because I have so many. But every time someone asks me, it bl my brain goes blank. Mm. I love uh, Alice Vikander. Uh, well, what about you? Do you like so much? Uh, I, I think I just like she's she has a very soft and warm quality, but she can also be really powerful. Mm -hmm. I like Saoirse Ronan. Yeah. I um, I love Taika Waititi. I love Luca Guadagnino, whose name I can't pronounce. I love <laughs> Lucas Stones. I love Sean Baker. I already said those, I think. Mm -hmm. um, do you, what about you? Do you have any? I don't know. For me, the, like, I mean, like, there's so many amazing names, but I don't know why, but one of my favorites probably is Tom Hardy. Hmm. In okay. like, yeah, I think just like, I mean, he is mostly on the kind of like this kind of unhinged side all the time like like a lot of his characters like a little bit like crazy ish like madman yeah but i just i just love him i just love him so much and i think one of his best performances one of my favorite performances of him is in picky blinders yeah <laughs> but it's well first of all it's his performance and also writing it's very yeah. good writing but he is just amazing in it and oscar isaac is amazing i think yeah uh but like all all the you know, like all, all the usual names you know like if you talk about like yeah uh, you know de niro and then al pacino yeah. and like i love olivia coleman as well oh yeah she's, she's, um, I mean, she's amazing of course yeah 
she like she is really really good i love, I love her. her and like I, re- I remember when she was receiving an oscar and her speech was so funny <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she was so charming, so kind of like... She's you know, so lovely. Yeah. And she's also like so her in every role that she plays. Mm-hmm. Like it really shines. So like she has this... And you know, some people are like, okay, yeah, but she always plays herself. Some people say that. Nah. But I don't think... And I think that's amazing. Like she always makes the role her own. And I yeah. think that's amazing. That's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because the characters, like I remember like, the, 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 the characters that I can remember like straight away out of my head. It's uh, in The Favourite. Uh, and then she was in, in this Marvel series. She had like completely different role, and like mm. she like you can see qualities of her in both, but it's completely different roles, completely different characters. So no, I don't I don't think so. I think she's she's, yeah. she's great. She has an Oscar, so she has know. an Oscar. So shut up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Have you ever thought about why why acting? And yeah, considering that you put yourself in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. why well why why it started i don't really know i do think it has to do with the fact that i've always loved to loved to be in these like you know as a kid reading books like i remember going to school and like in my head like pretending that the world around me looks differently than it does like when i went to school i would pretend that i would walk upstairs i'd pretend like i'm walking up the stairs of hogwarts or <laughs> it sounds so <laughs> silly oh my it god it sounds cute and it's, it sounds very cute it's amazing charming. but it's okay yeah. or like i remember in this series slash book slash film called the golden compass that people have like de- demons which is like an animal that lives outside of your body mm-hmm. and i used to pretend that i had one like I'd sit in school and I used to pretend that I had a bird on my shoulder. Silly things like that. So basically, like, always, I always loved this idea of, like, creating, like, worlds around me and living in some, in this imaginary world. So I think that, that's what started it, I think, for me. Mm -hmm. But then now, to what it's really, I feel like, it's going to sound so cliche again, but I feel like sometimes in acting or, like, do, when doing scenes, with someone else is like the most me and the most like real that I ever am because you don't have that because you're like allowed you have the excuse of there's a camera and there's a script to be like oh no but I was playing a character Mm -hmm. that wasn't really me I can do whatever I want I can be crazy and weird because Uh I was just playing a character whereas in real life you kind of you know you have to like you have these certain things that you like you kind of, you know, you, 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 uh, you can expose yourself and you have yeah. an excuse. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's Do, my do you think you're crazy and weird? Do I think I'm crazy <laughs> and weird? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> what way? <laughs> I don't know. Just like, not like in a bad way. I think, um, yeah, I do think I have like a little bit of an inner, inner weird psycho, mm-hmm. but not like scary. Mm. I think just like I think everyone does don't you think I don't know I, I, I think I, everyone does but some people are just better at hiding it yeah yeah but like, I mean like what do you mean by like weird and crazy like crazy in what way crazy in, like in, yeah that's a good question what yeah. does that even mean yeah. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but it's scary to kind of even when you have an excuse it can be scary actually I was just the other day in my Meisner class that I go to there was this moment where one of the other actors she um like got really emotional and then was like surprised by how like you can get you you can get surprised by your own emotions you know and like I think that's so cool that like we all have things inside of ourselves that we don't even know are there yet mm. and that maybe would never have been would maybe possibly never be brought out mm-hmm. if we weren't doing this no were yeah. you ever surprised with it by myself yeah many times yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the biggest surprise for you <laughs> i think the biggest surprise for me was how like when we were doing the short film the german one how much it affected me like it was really strange even it was only two weeks it's not even that long of a period but I felt really strange I remember coming back to London after it and feeling like this isn't my 
house like it was, it was very weird yeah. it was like an yeah like a like a out of body ex- not out of body but like everything just seemed strange mm-hmm. to me uh and how long did it take you to get used to back get back not used to it that long, yeah, but not that long it it took me like it took me like a week to kind of feel normal going to work again but it took me like a month before i was before i felt like myself again mm-hmm. and that hasn't happened to me with anything else before and i was mm. really surprised because i didn't expect it to happen was it a good surprise yeah, yeah yes good in the sense that i was really proud of myself that i had really you know committed to yeah. that role but also scary in the sense that like what if i get something like this and i have to do it for months on end like that's terrifying mm-hmm. And you get stuck it was in it. really quite scary sometimes yeah. the way that it made me feel because i the feelings that i had i never had those feelings in my life before which is again what i said earlier like it brings things to the surface that you would probably maybe never have or mm-hmm. never have experienced so you wouldn't see those parts of yourself um but yeah but mm-hmm. i learned like from that because i spoke to someone is that basically your body when you're acting I mean, maybe this is obvious, but when you're acting, your body experiences things that your brain knows isn't real, right? But you still felt those feelings in mm-hmm. your body and you've still done those things physically. So technically you have gone through them mm-hmm. and your brain and your body, you, they can't tell apart yeah. the truth of that. So that's really interesting. Interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, I never thought about it because like you kind of basically, you do create experiences that you go through and like your brain creates like neuro connections that kind of fix this this thing Mm -hmm. as your experience and your experience do change you a little bit too i mean like depends on experience some experience change you a lot some not so much but like it's still kind of like interesting i never i never thought about that to be fair like it's it's interesting thought like so you you went through like i don't know a, a movie about war to a degree and then you kind of like what do you have ptsd I don't. Yeah, it depends. I think some, to to an extent you could. I mm. don't know because like it's like I read the, another like about an actress who had you know there was a scene like if you're I don't know like you're crying because something happened to you but you get your body to the place where you are actually hyperventilating and crying mm-hmm. for hours mm-hmm. and your brain knows that the 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 reason why you're crying isn't real mm-hmm. but your body is still going through mm-hmm. it so afterwards you're still gonna be you know you're still gonna have felt all of that yeah so it's really strange. Mm. And you chose that as a profession. <laughs> and we chose that as a profession. We, Isn't it amazing? It's true. it's true. What's in a pipeline for you? What's next for you? Uh, what's next for me right now? God knows. Mm-hmm. I were work, I'm working on another short film with Alex. Mm-hmm. And I'm auditioning. And I'm hoping that something sticks. Yeah. And yeah, you know. Let's hope. Fingers crossed for all of us. That's, that's, that's it. That's all we can hope for. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it will, though. It will. I have a good feeling. I think it will soon. Soon. Uh, as, as you know, they say in Russian, like everything will happen. You just have to stop wanting it. Really? You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's she might be right. Nice to me, though. Like I don't want it anymore. Well, there, here you go. Yeah. Why is it? Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's ever gonna. Ha- That's not gonna work for me though, because I'm never gonna stop wanting it. Well, then you'll get it. We will. Will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Blitz round. Blitz round. Blitz round. Quick lighting questions. Mm-hmm. Quick answers. As I always say, no points, no prize, no point of doing it. Great. Texting or talking? Talking. Cats or dogs? Cats. Uh, your one guilty pleasure? The reality TV. Oh, really? Which one? Oh. I'm not going to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all, all. <laughs> all right. Uh, what makes you laugh? Movies. And Alex, my flatmate, my best friend. Okay. Who makes me laugh? What makes you angry? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, actually, Alex and my sister makes me angry. Yeah. And the industry. The industry makes me angry sometimes. Uh, do you have any nicknames? No, actually, I don't really. I no. don't. I used to as a kid, but they were like bullying mean nicknames. Uh, why? Why would you? Why would anyone bully you? I know, right? Because I was small and shy and insecure. That's not the reason to bully someone. I know, but you bully someone if they're big and fat and you know. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, you don't. 
unless you have to. <laughs> What is wrong with you? <laughs>、uh, because, Cut that. Yeah, I'm not cutting that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they are your friend, bully your fat friend、yeah, if he's a guy.、Is. That's you. That's what we do. That's what like that's what guys do to yeah, each other. It's, it's like、nice. you know when you ask a girl if your girlfriend asks you like if she's like am I fat? I go no, you're beautiful. If a guy asks his friend am I fat, they're saying like yeah, I have five fat friends and you three of them. So it's <laughs> maybe we should talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving.、No. Okay, okay. Don't don't fat shame anyone. Don't, don't bully、please. people. Yeah, please don't. What dish do you cook best?、Uh, halloumi stroganoff. I've、yeah. never heard about that. Yeah, it's you know stroganoff. Yeah, but、of、with、course. halloumi. Yeah, with halloumi.、Mm -hmm. Does it still have meat in it? No, it's vegetarian. Interesting.、Mm -hmm. Not promising, but interesting. <laughs> That's <laughs>、uh, a joke. I'll prove you wrong one day. <laughs> okay, well, do you know what? I'll take it as a promise. Yeah. <laughs>、uh, so, what is your favorite character in any fictional story? Like, oh wow, book, no way!、Film? This is way too hard. Okay, I do actually know. There's a film called、um, System Crasher. It's a steam springer in the original language, and it's a German film about a young girl who's like basically. Trapped in the system, going back and forth between. I think she's like nine. The actress in the film,、uh, going between foster families, back and forth, and no one like basically, no one knows what to do with her because she's,、um, you know, she's very, she struggles a lot, and she's not necessarily always easy to deal with. And that character is, is really amazing. Star Wars or the Lord of the Rings?、Uh, Lord of the Rings, because I haven't seen Star Wars. Counts. I'll count it. <laughs> How often do you cry? Every day. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I watch a I watch a a, a video about a cat. <laughs> I mean, I like watching videos, I, I understand. I understand. Like I I cry like a like a little girl every time when I'm watching anything、yeah. that like you know, at least a little bit touching, and you know even if I know like oh my god it's so cheesy it's so cheesy and then I <laughs> still, I, still, I still like it's so <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But do you mean like about like cry about like serious things or what? Yeah.、Mean? Not that often,、no. really. No, actually, very not often at all. I cry like I cry every day because like watching movies or reading a sad book or you know watching a stupid clip on Instagram.、Mm -hmm. But about serious things, not that often. Maybe once every two months.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's often enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How can people? Reach you if they want to talk to you, or I mean, if they want to work with you. If they want to talk to me, they can reach me through <laughs> my Instagram, Charlene dot Ilya. Or if they want to work with me, they can reach me through my agent. They're called A and J Artists. Okay, and one last thing is, I asked you to prepare a one cool、oh, thing,、yes. something that you really like and you think our viewers or listeners would should try to. Um. So there's this guy, and his name is David Penn. Um, he has his company is called The Naked Face, and he does these acting workshops.、Uh, and they're like they're for me, it was a complete game changer. I I met him for the first time in Prague. Oh yeah, he does class. He does workshops in Prague,、um, Berlin, and in London. And he's coming to London actually now this summer in July, August. He's going to、mm. be in London. He's expensive, hence why I've only done his workshops like twice. I can only afford it like once、mm -hmm. a year. But, like, it's so worth it because he like his classes. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it too much, but they're like different from anything that I've ever done before, and really like changed my perspective on acting and filmmaking in general. And、mm -hmm. he's a really cool guy. He's really nice. He's chill. Well, he does what, what kind of、uh, work workshops? He It's、does. screen, like specifically for screen、mm -hmm. and like techniques with the camera. And、mm -hmm. becoming comfortable with the camera, but also acting in front、mm -hmm. of the camera in general. And he works a lot with physicality. Like he works a lot with, you know, being aware of your space and the、uh, your other your scene partners. And,、um, okay. If you can afford him, <laughs> <laughs> but he's great. It's worth it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was. Lovely to talk to. It was lovely to talk to you. I、fun. hope we'll do it again. Yes. At some point.、Uh, When either of us has won the Oscar, we'll be doing it. Well, <laughs> I'm joking. You know, 
Emmy's fine soon. Okay, sure. <laughs> or maybe, maybe suddenly Granny, who knows? Settle. <laughs> <laughs> or Golden Globe. Or just when we done some more fun stuff. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you liked it, like the video or the podcast. I don't know if you're listening or you're watching. Subscribe, share, or don't, or do. Uh, and <laughs> if you have any comments, uh, let us know what you think about this one in the comment section.